Got the rear pads and rotors on your fourth gen Maxima. Uh, tools needed for this: we have 14 millimeter head caliper to bracket bolt here, uh, 17 millimeter head bracket to rear axle bolts back here. You also need a tool to turn in the rear caliper pistons. Uh, they don't push in just like the front because they have an integrated parking brake. They actually turn back in. Uh, and I'll show you that tool later. I'm gonna start off. Take off the 14 millimeter head caliper to bracket bolts and they are facing away from you so make sure you go the right direction well, let's get those two off caliper should just pull right off Just let that hang to the side, it'll hang off the uh, parking brake cable and not put any stress on that brake line. So pull your pads out. The string is just falling out there. These are good, but the other side went metal to metal. This is a seized caliper, so I'm swapping everything over. That's a good time to check the, uh, the slide pins on the caliper bracket here. Make sure they go in and out nice and smooth. Now you're going to take off the 17mm head, bracket to rear axle bolts. Remember to watch these. These got separate lock washers on the rear bolts. So just make sure you keep them with it. If you don't put those back on, I believe the bolts are long enough to actually go into the rotor. And that would just be a bad thing. And there's on the top one, lock washer. So pull that bracket off. Watch some shims go flying. And now that you got that bracket off, you can remove the rotor. Uh, in my case, I'm looking up, they just kind of pulled right off. If they don't, you're just going to replace them anyway. You just take and hit right there. Or uh, if you can get it from the backside, I really can't because the car is so low. Uh, it works really well to hit it right on the backside there, right where you took off that bracket and everything. Nice clear open area to smash it on. Uh, if you're going to save the rotors, you're taking them somewhere to be resurfaced. Honestly, at 20 or 30 bucks a piece for the rotors, I wouldn't even bother. Um, if I had a brake light to the house, then yeah, definitely. But uh, if you're going to keep them, then you can put around the top hat here, uh, try to break loose the, where it's rusted to the hub itself. Or you can just use two bolts to jack it out, much like a water pump, or I believe I may have showed you that in the front brake video. So you'd smash on the rotor. And yank it off. Now's a good time to check out your, your rear hub bearings. And that's about right where it should be. Uh, should go a couple turns and stop. It shouldn't just free spin forever. Uh, if it does that, then it's about time to get a new uh, new rear hub. And of course, the rear hubs on these come in one assembly, the hub and the bearing. Uh, most of them do not come with wheel studs. You'll have to swap those out. Uh, the bearing on the other side in this car just spins free so I might replace that and show you how to replace those wheel studs at the same time uh, alright well check that out uh, it's a good time to check out your backing plate also these are kind of rusted this one ain't too bad yet I had to rip the other side completely off so just uh, you know take a look around uh, now's a good time to look at your exhaust from this wheel uh, check out your take a look at your rear struts see if they're leaking or not see if there's uh, dust boots and bumpers and everything are all torn up because they likely will be. Uh, check out your parking brake cables, make sure they're not seized up. And uh, yeah, so before we go any further, I'm going to go straight to compressing the rear caliper piston because that can be kind of a pain and the other side took me a while to fight with it. So yeah, we'll go to that next. And here I have a uh, rear caliper service kit. 
This one came from Harbor Freight. It was like uh, 40 bucks, something like that. It actually works out pretty well. You see in here, the nice thing is it's got a left hand and a right hand adapter for uh, or the uh, threaded pusher. Uh, the left hand ones you only use on Fords, as far as I've seen, and only a couple of Fords at that. I think they stopped doing that. Most of them are all uh, drum and hat now. But you can see you got uh, adapters for most rear rotors, or most rear calipers. Uh, on the Maxima, specifically you'd use number or letter E, this little four pin job right here. Um, you can also use the cube, I mentioned that in my other video. I'll probably put up a link to one in the description. They work pretty well, uh, but they work on most imports I've found, no problem, except for Volkswagen. They had to modify them a little for that, and on Fords, they don't quite work. Uh, they, they'll work, but they'll slip off really easily. Um, yeah, so one of these sets or a cube or you could even use needle nose pliers like I attempted to show you in the first video. If your calipers aren't seized up, it actually works uh, decently well, but as always, you know, it's best to use the, the proper tool for the job. And at 40 bucks, it saves a lot of time and aggravation. It's worth a shot. You can see I was fighting the uh, seized up caliper on the other side. It kind of bent the shit out of that rod right there. But, uh, got her done. We'll see how it is on this side. Let me see, I put this, bolt this bracket back in place loosely. And I'm going to put the rear caliper tool in the caliper and I'm going to put the caliper and bolt it back up on here just so it can, I can keep that still and apply more force to the tool. Uh, if they aren't seized up, then you really don't need to do that. You can just hold the caliper in your hand. That's not really a problem. But with these, uh, the rear dust boots are completely destroyed on the pistons. So they will probably be, uh, pretty rough getting back in there but hey we'll see all right to set these up you'll take your tool and snap in that little piece it's got a nice little magnet right there to hold it in place and that goes right on there get your caliper make sure to engage the, the uh, adapter piece in front of the tool probably can screw this in a bit so it fits in there especially if your brake pads are all the way worn down the piston will be out pretty far to get in there you got to uh, engage those four notches in the tool in the adapter with those four slots in the face of the piston then you back this out until it's snug this pad here is snug up against the back of the caliper and what you do you just turn and these are actually going uh, pretty hard like the other side, so I'm going to have to mount it up in the caliper bracket. Another thing you can see is when I start turning, I start twisting this piston boot right here too, this dust boot. Uh, if that happens, what you want to do is take a small screwdriver or pick and kind of pick up that, uh, that boot where it's stuck under that piston. And I like using a silicone spray, any type of uh, spray loop, WD-40, anything like that will work. You just want to get some lubrication in there so when you turn the piston it doesn't destroy this dust boot which is what looks like would happen on the other side so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and we'll get back to uh, compressing this piston I'm gonna try to get in here and do this on camera so you can see what I'm talking about little box screwdriver try to get up in there there we go just kind of push that, that dust boot back get some lube up in there and usually if you hold it up like this spray it on top you don't need to spray it anywhere else you can just kind of run the screwdriver pick whatever around the boot and it'll spread the lube around there <clears throat> so let's try this again There we go, it's spinning it independent of that boot now. It's still pretty rough, so I'm gonna have to mount it up on this bracket here. Some bolts up. You don't need to bolt everything down all the way, just get the bolts in there a couple threads. Oh, so you can put some 
we can really apply some torque on this tool. And as you're going, you want to make sure to back this off so it stays snug in there. You'll see it'll loosen up. It's going to produce any. Easiest objective, it should be going a lot easier than this. But it's going in there. I think you can see why it's so much easier to kind of bolt this caliper back up because I just have to twist, I don't have to hold and just keep turning and make sure you keep backing this one off. And basically, just keep going until you bottom out the piston. Did right there. Now, one thing you have to be aware of is that your rear pads have a little tab. What's up, are you? A little tab right here. Now, you want to make sure that when you turn this caliper piston back, you leave one of them notches pointing straight down so it can slide into that tab. Otherwise, uh, when the pistons come out, you'll have a flat face on here, and the piston will have to kind of cock over to get on the rest of this. If that little tab is inside the notch, then you have the piston down square on the back side of the pad. So I'll take this back off. Just want to verify that we've got a notch straight down, which is unlikely. They're yeah, not even close. So in this case, since I bottomed it out, uh, it might be best not to bottom it out completely uh, when you're getting close to the end. Just gonna take a look and make sure you got a notch pointing straight down for them rear pads. I'm gonna rotate the piston back out just enough to get a notch pointing straight down. And that's all it's up right there. And you see now, I have a notch pointing straight down, and that should fit on that pad perfectly. Right now you're ready to put your new rotor on there. First you're going to clean it off, it's got this, uh, this rust protectant on it, uh, some kind of oil, cosmoline type stuff uh, from the factory, so they, don't, so they don't rust while in storage. The quickest and easiest way to clean them off. Just use some brake parts cleaner. Wipe it down. The surface shouldn't be oily at all. Also, watch out. Make sure you don't put any grease on there from your hands. From your hands, you don't want any kind of grease or contamination on this braking surface here. So once you clean the back side, flip it over. Get it on the right way. Clean off the front side. At this point, I'll just throw a couple lug nuts on there to keep the rotor in place. And I'm putting the bracket caliper and pads back on. There we go. Alright, now uh, let's put this bracket back on here. Let's so take the bracket and set it back in place. these two bolts back in. And as always, the uh, torque specs will be in the video. It's like 40 foot pounds, something like that. Somewhat tight. So 
like to give it a spin to make sure it's not touching that bracket. Now for the rear pads, actually for most pads, my preferred method for lubrication, and you already saw I was using this, uh, this CRC braking caliper grease, my preferred method is to lube the ends of the pads, but they're going to be meeting the bracket. Then on these, since there's a uh, another large shim at the top of the caliper, it's just to lube this upper, this little nub right up here. I never really lube the uh, where the caliper where the pads meet the caliper piston, just because that attracts dirt. And I'm not really a fan of uh, greasy, dirty rear brakes. So this works fine. Never really have any issues with brake noise. And that's all you're really trying to prevent here: brake noise, and also, of course, making sure these slide nice and easily when they're in service. So there, and you can see up underneath the caliper. In here is a metal plate. I was talking about some kind of anti-rattle shim. And it touches directly on these two little pads right here. These two little nubs on top of the pads. Alright, so take your caliper. And slide it back on there. You have to fight with these slide pins. Get it lined up. If it really doesn't want to line up, uh, double check. The, uh, the piston rotation, or the piston position, make sure the notch is going straight down to go onto the tab on that pad. And once you get the caliper back on, screw in these two 14mm head bolts, hold the caliper to the bracket. Tighten them down. And torque specs in the video, uh, I'd say 10 or 15 pounds, maybe. All you'll have to do now is uh, put on the wheel. Put everything down, take it off for test drive, see how it feels, and you are done. Uh, replacing rear pads and rotors on your 4th Gen Maxima.